Welcome on into the Wolverine.com podcast. Clayton Safey here with Chris Ballas and Anthony Broom on Thursday, September 26th. Michigan heading into its fifth straight home game to open the season. They will take on Minnesota. We will break that game down here on the podcast today. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like the video. If you want Michigan to keep that little brown jug here in Ann Arbor, subscribe to the YouTube channel so we can get to 30,000 subscribers. We are ever so close. And head to thewolverine.com. Use the promo code UM1 right now for two months of premium access for just $1. Jump on in with the thousands of Michigan fans on our message board. Get all of our premium content, uh, updates on all sorts of things, analysis, pregame, postgame, in-game over at thewolverine.com. Uh, Michigan heading into this one. They've won their last four meetings against Minnesota. They got a 77, 25, and 3 edge overall in the series. 73, 23, and 2 with the Little Brown Jug on the line. It's college football's oldest trophy rivalry beginning back in 1903. Michigan's won 26 of the last 28, 44 of the last 50, and they've beaten Minnesota 77 times total. That's the most wins Michigan has over any school in history. Uh, the Gophers are the Wolverines' third most common opponent all time. The Little Brown Jug, kind of a fun trophy. I feel like Michigan fans don't appreciate it enough until it's gone. So the number one goal this week is keep that damn thing here in Ann Arbor. Yeah, and don't drop it on the sidelines, man. At what point does this thing become a relic where you say, uh, you know what, if you give it to one of these big dumb linemen that doesn't have any hands, that thing's <laughs> going to end up shattered in powder on the on the turf at Michigan Stadium. So uh, it's my I'm going to guess here that in the next 10 years or so, that thing is put somewhere in a museum and they, they get a replica or something mm. like that. That's just my, my gut feeling. So, but uh, I love the history behind it. I love the fact that all the, where are they now as I used to do? And Anthony Broom has taken over and done a great job on these in the magazine. But uh, I used to talk to the guys from the forties that used to talk about Minnesota and what a rival they were and how much fun the stories were. I remember sitting in Elvin Wister's kitchen guys, believe it or not, having banana bread talking about, some of his experiences in that game and a guy named Leo Namalini and uh, how they got a, a big bag of, uh, they were thinking of ways cause he was such a dirty player to get him back. So they filled a bag with sawdust and they were like pretending to like spin around and like hit it with uh, their cleat or something like that to see if they could get him in the stomach and the thing ripped open and they said, Oh my God, we can't kill him, you know, and have uh, his in entrails all over the field. So, but uh, long story short, those were good days. These are not as good days for the rivalry, but that trophy is still important. Everything you want to accomplish is on the line on Saturday. You got to bring that thing back and keep it here. Yeah, in a weird way. Like, I can't speak to the guys from the 40s or anything like that, but, you know, since I've been alive, and Clayton certainly, you know, all of us have been around since then, but the only time Michigan's lost to Minnesota is when things have been going terribly wrong, right? It was the, um, you know, I think of the concussion game uh, in 2014, I think that was. Uh, they lost also in, it was Rich Rod's first year, right? Or was that one of the wins that they had? No, that was that was the Nick Sheridan game. Yeah, okay. I think I think, I think Lloyd Carr lost to them in uh, 2005, maybe? Whatever it was, the only time that they've lost this game. I've lost and, yeah, whenever they've lost this game, I mean, it's uh, it, it's it has not fared well for the long-term health of the season and uh, the way that this Michigan team has played at times on offense, they could lose any game they play this year. Um, they're a bit ripe uh, for the, for the picking in that regard, but yeah, I mean, I love that trophy. I love the history behind it. Uh, I have family. It's from Minnesota in Minnesota. So um, no, they're not diehard gopher fans, so to speak, but always kind of fun to have that connection. So uh, one of the best, like, in terms of rivalry trophies in this sport, one of the best there is, and uh, always excited to see it get trotted out there. So uh, respect the jug more, people. <laughs> Chris Ballas fact check on 2005. True, 23 to 20, Minnesota with the win. That was, so uh, two wins for Minnesota this century, like we said, 26 to 28. So been dominated by Michigan. The other one was the Shane Morris game that a lot of people would like to forget. And, you know, Whatever. They won a national championship since then. So I think people are a little bit over that one at this point. But Minnesota coming in two and two. They got losses in North Carolina, 19 to 17. Iowa last week, 31 to 14. 
wins over Rhode Island, 48 nothing. Nevada, 27 nothing. Um, didn't learn a ton from those games, but uh, you know, we'll see if they can get a win here over a power four opponent. We'll break it down here, but before we do, we have to talk about our friends over at Prize Picks. It's the most fun way to watch sports with Prize Picks, where you can win up to 100 times your money this football season. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. It takes about 20 seconds. It's a great way to test your skills as a fan. Uh, we have a special offer for you. Go to prizepicks.com or the Prize Picks app and use code Wolverine to receive a guaranteed $50 once you play $5 in lineups. Again, go to prizepicks.com or the Prize Picks app. Use the code Wolverine to receive a guaranteed $50 once you play $5 in lineups. Uh, I'll, I'll make a couple picks here today just because I, I play Prize Picks regularly. I already have these in for Thursday night, but I got Dak Prescott more than 263 and a half passing yards and Zeke Elliott because I'm no fan of his less than 27 and a half rushing yards against the New York Giants on Thursday night football, but they got college football lines. They got uh, everything you could think of over at prizepicks.com or the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code Wolverine to receive a $50 uh, guarantee once you play $5 in lineups. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. Uh, let's talk about the Michigan offense heading into this game. Um, certainly been a talking point this week coming off of the win over USC Alex Orgy getting his second career start. We'll see what he has around him in terms of the weapons. Colston Loveland. We'll see what Marlon Klein's status is uh, in this game as well. But I think there's no question that now that you have a game of film out there on you and you know you were able to get the win over USC, but there's got to be a, a better level of consistency here. One stat that stands out to me is eight punts last game, seven completed passes, right? You don't want that to to be the case. I know we talked about the stat, you know, after game one, that you know, more uh, made field goals than, than extra points for Dominic Zavada. That was actually through a couple of weeks. You don't want that either, but uh, this Michigan offense, maybe try to take a next step here with Alex Orgy behind center. Yeah. 2.7 yards per attempt. I think it was guys. Am I breaking up by any chance? Nope. No. Okay, good. All right. 2.7 yards per attempt. That's that sucks. Uh, it's gotta be better. And uh, to me, USC kind of put the blueprint on paper, right? That, okay, cover zero in the second half. We're going to bring our safeties up. Yeah, you're going to try to run the ball. We're going to try to – you're going to have to do something different. And uh, if not for Kalal Mullings, then Clayton Safety doesn't win staff picks last week and we're all making fun of him. Instead, he's a hero, right? So If it weren't um, for the thing that I predicted to happen happening, then I would have lost. <laughs> oh, you predicted that Kalal Mullings would break a third and one 60-something yard run? I predicted so, they win by three, baby. Let's you did, go. absolutely. So uh, the point being, though, you aren't going to get those miracles every week. So they need to be more consistent. They need to have some semblance of a passing game, which they do not right now. And um, I, I don't know that it's sustainable. I've said that. I hope it is. I hope that Alex Orgy is a better thrower than we think he is. And I don't think we have any evidence of that. So hopefully he shows up and uh, and kills it. But that's why I think this is going to be a lower scoring tight game for a good portion of it. PJ Flex is a good football coach. So you know that they are going to make them earn everything they get. They're going to take away what Michigan wants to do and kind of try to put him in positions and make make him uncomfortable, Alex Orgy. And uh, I think we've seen that that's possible. So they're going to need some better blocking from up front too. Defense is going to have to win. Can't give up any big plays, fellas, uh, in this game. Uh, it's, you've, got to, you've got to limit those and – because this is probably going to be a, a late third quarter game, at least in my opinion, the way this offense is struggling. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest task right now is is leveling out some of the peaks and valleys, right? Like you you won't trade those explosive plays for anything. It's not – you can't treat them as hypotheticals. You can't say, oh, well, you take this run away from Kalel Mullings. You take this run away from Donovan Edwards. No, those things happen. Um, and I think those things can continue to happen because I think those guys are really good players. And I think that in the run blocking game, this offensive line, I, I think, has gotten better the first four weeks. Now, to me, I mean, I think for this offense, one, you obvi like, obviously, like, the vacuum of one game, yeah, what they did last week against USC got the job done. But you just aren't going to win many football games unless you're a service academy uh, where you're, you know, throwing the ball for 32 yards. Um, so for me, it's less about, you know, is, is the run game, the run game is absolutely sustainable. 
we've seen that plenty of times at Michigan. And yeah, this line is a notch or two below, maybe a couple notches below what we've gotten used to seeing. But for me, it's about just find not even finding a way to be balanced, finding a way to make the defense honest, finding a way to cash in on some of the opportunities that these loaded boxes are going to give you. Um, you look at last week, the drive chart, two touchdowns in five first half possessions. And then you go punt, 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 punt. That's four punts, then a fumble, then a punt, and then the game winning touchdown drive. I mean, that's where I think you can come out early and kind of establish yourselves. I think the biggest challenge for everyone and what made Michigan's offense so good last year is the ability to zig when everyone else zags or when these other teams make adjustments. Um, they did not adjust well to what USC did to them in the second half. And to me, I think that's uh, you know finding ways to level that out, finding ways to do different things based on what the defense gives you. Uh, just take what the defense gives you, uh, I think is critical. So um, can they sustain it? I look at what Iowa did to Minnesota last week and say, yes, Michigan can absolutely sustain that. And But again, I mean, you look at the schedule for Minnesota. I mean, they, they host USC next week. You look at who they play. There's not a lot of gimmies on there for them either. And, and there's a path to getting Michigan in a rock fight in this game. So, yeah, I mean, those guys are well coached. They're going to play physical. I don't think they're going to, you know, fold shop like USC did at times in the first half of that game. So this is a challenge this week. This is uh, if last week was reestablishing what your identity is, this week has to be peeling back another layer of that. Yeah, I watched the entire Iowa Minnesota game the other night and it was interesting because nothing for Iowa early in the game came easy. Um, Cade was checking down everything and they were just a couple yard gains and they weren't running the ball all that well, even though they had Caleb Johnson, who's an unbelievable running back uh, for the Hawkeyes. And then the second half, they just kept leaning on them, leaning on them. They started to win up front and Minnesota really had no answer. It turned into a blowout by the end of it, even though Minnesota was up 14, seven at halftime. Um, I think Michigan could do something similar. Um, but at the same time, Minnesota was banged up in the secondary. They missed a lot of tackles. Uh, we'll see if they get a couple guys back, including Justin Wally, their best corner, uh, and their starting strong safety who was out. So those could be factors here as well. Uh, they have a great nickelback, Jack Henderson, who's played really well early on this season. Uh, but I, again, like can Michigan move the football consistently in this game? They had three rushes of 40-plus yards last week. They had seven of those all of last season. Uh, right now, in, in terms of 40-plus yard rushes, Michigan, I think, is top 10 right now this year. And, you know, so relatively speaking, like it doesn't happen all that often to rip those off. So you're going to have to find something else. Uh, but you may not have to find something else this week if Minnesota plays like they did last week, which is no guarantee, but certainly a, a matchup that – I think favors Michigan going in, but every week's different and, and we'll see how it plays out. Um, anything else on the Michigan offense before we flip it over to the defense? Yeah, I just hopefully Colson Loveland plays. I think it's leaning yeah. that way. And I think that's a huge safety net for Alex Orgy or any quarterback, right? Yes. He's their best receiver, not just their best tight end. So uh, you get him back, I think that will help. So, But they've got to take a few more shots, fellas. They've got to expand this thing. If they're planning on going with Alex Orgy for the rest of the year, it's not just about beating Minnesota, guys. It's about winning at Washington. It's about beating Oregon. It's about uh, beating, you know, it, winning at Illinois on the road, which doesn't look easy. Even Indiana. Uh, it's funny because I, you know, again, I make fun of their coach, but he's a, a good football coach, clearly. So uh, we'll see. But that's where it is right now. And they are what they are. So hopefully they're a little bit more than that this week. Yeah, I think the Colson Lovell thing is, is a great point. You know, you get hopefully your best offensive weapon back that's a you know you can leak him out and he can be a check down guy he'd be a guy that takes those check downs farther than most guys would um i want to see that i want to see these wide receivers get a little more involved uh have done a pretty solid job run blocking especially look at some of the stuff that fred moore's done on film i think he's kind of an ascending player but um yeah i mean you have to start showing something more and, uh, you know, they have the pieces to do that. 
I think a lot of these guys have a lot more to give and, and this coaching staff has a lot more to give. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But offensively, I, I can see the plan being very similar to what it was and them still winning that way. So, uh, you know, again, it's leave it to Michigan to have a big win and then send you into a week where you still don't really know much about them. Yeah. I think if you're Alex Orgy, the, the bare minimum like he did last week was not turning over the ball and in, in winning the game as he talked about on, on Monday when we got to talk to him um, and ball security will be important uh, in this game because I think it is going to be somewhat low scoring and a game where the margins are going to be, the margin for error will be very small. Uh, so Michigan just has to avoid mistakes first and foremost, because the first half of last week's game kind of played out how you wanted it to in terms of field position. You know, they were able to move the ball a little bit on that first drive to kind of start winning that battle. And that's a good start. It's not all you need to do, but uh, it is something that that is a requisite here to competing and winning this game, in my opinion. Uh, let's move over to Michigan's defense against Minnesota's offense. Um, I, I believe last year when Michigan played Minnesota, Ethan, Ethan Kaliak Manis had, what, five completions or something like that? Uh, his first completion of the game was to our boy number two, Will Johnson. Uh, and then Keon Sav gets in. Uh, the mix there with a, a pick six of his own in that game, it kind of snowballed, but Minnesota was in it at halftime uh, due to uh, a nice catch by Daniel Jackson, who is a pretty electric receiver for Minnesota, who is back for what feels like the 10th year out there in Minneapolis. But transfer quarterback Max Brosmer coming in from New Hampshire, he was an All-American in the FCS last year. So far this season, okay, uh, completing 65.8% of his passes for 836 yards. Five touchdowns, three picks, had a couple picks against Iowa. Likes to throw over in the middle. Some of those get batted up. That's just routine Iowa football. They're going to pick those off. Tips and overthrows. They got to get those. Michigan's got to get them this week as well. And then a pair of backs, Darius Taylor, Marcus Major, uh, Oklahoma transfer, have carried the load for them offensively. But they've thrown a lot more than you would think uh, a P.J. Fleck team would. Yeah, and – if they get a couple big ones, you never know, right? That's what you have to avoid. And that's one of the keys to the game that I put in today. No easy ones, no communication breakdowns like you had against USC. And you cannot give up the uncovered touchdown, for example, right? As hard as it is to score for this football team, this Michigan football team, you can't be giving up easy ones and then expect to get them back right away with explosive plays. This is not a team, a Michigan team that is built that way. So um, that's going to be critical. Uh, I think Wink Martindale came out firing uh, a little bit. He was he was on fire yesterday talking about how people say he blitzes too much and he's irresponsible and so on and so forth. And I don't expect him to do that. And I don't expect that he'll have to. I think this Michigan offense, defensive line rather against this Minnesota offensive line, I like that matchup for the Wolverines. I would expect a lot more max protection from uh, Minnesota. And I think they've got a tight end that's uh, that's pretty sneaky good that uh, you got to keep an eye on him. Safety play has to be better, guys. So, um, and that's really uh, what it comes down to. But of course, it comes down to stopping the run. And I asked Wink Martindale, I said, Did you watch last year's film? Minnesota did a couple different things here where they mixed it up a little and, and last year and, and did a couple things uh, that kind of caught Michigan off guard and had some success running the ball early. Can't allow that to happen either. And if you do, you're going to have to adjust quickly. So, uh, I don't think this is a team that's going to move the ball up and down on this Michigan team at all. I think it'll be a lower scoring game, and I think we better get used to some of those. Yeah, to me, this is going to be a game. Uh, this is for both Doug Skeen and uh, and Ryan Van Bergen, my post game show uh, co host. It's going to be one in the trenches. Um, last week, I thought the biggest reason that Michigan positioned itself to do what it did against USC was because it was because we saw Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant. And that defensive line, Josiah Stewart, Derek Moore, kind of impose their will and dominate that game and take over that game. Um, you look at what, I mean, Minnesota has this, you look at their offensive line, each of those guys, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, across the front, they're all about 320, 330, big guys, physical guys. Um, you know, of the teams that you've played this year, I think this, this one is probably a little better suited to hold up and you know, one of those classic Big Ten bar fights uh, compared to some of the other group. You know, outside of you know Texas is just a different level uh, of everyone than everyone else right now. Um, Minnesota is 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 going to play a physical game. It's going to test those guys a lot. Um, it's another week where Mason Graham needs to have a good game. Another week where those Ed rushers need to step up. Um, 
Yeah, I, I just think that you know if you can control the line of scrimmage on defense, I, I don't see this Minnesota team doing a ton. I mean, they're they're at their best when they can run the football and then take some of those intermediate shots. Uh, you stop the run in this game. I, I don't know that Minnesota has the firepower to hold up. Now, I don't know if Mi Michigan has the firepower to run away from them, but if you handle your business on defense, get some of those communication errors worked out on the back end, um, and even if there's a bust here or there, I think Michigan's going to be fine in this game. It's funny, Chris, you mentioned – that you know, Wink Martindale and the Michigan staff, of course, has gone back and watched the Minnesota game from last year. If you're a Minnesota offensive lineman and you go back and watch the game from last year against Michigan, oh boy, do you see number 55 out there just wrecking the entire game? I had, I had never seen anything like it um, in terms of a defensive tackle actually just wrecking an entire game. And like, you know, talk about, oh, D tackles don't always get the stats and you know, sometimes they're doing the dirty work. I mean, he was doing the dirty work and getting the stats and completely dominating the Minnesota offensive line. They have two with one three. hand with one hand, with one hand. Yeah. He had, yeah. he had the club on his hand. Um, you know, it was, I, I really, I think uh, last game may have been up there and maybe the top two, three games that Mason Graham has played uh, the game against USC. I think Alabama has to be up there as well. But the Minnesota game was the best, in my opinion. I asked him a few weeks ago what his best game was, and he said probably the Minnesota game from last year. So um, I agree, Anthony. I, I think that Michigan's D-line should have some success here against these kind of – like P.J. Fleck loves to get these massive offensive linemen, but they can't. They don't seem like they can really move all that well. And Michigan's D-line is just so athletic and, and fast that I think that they should have a lot mm -hmm. of success. Iowa did last week. They kind of bullied him up front. And uh, talking to Randy Johnson, not the big unit, but Randy Johnson, who covers Minnesota for the Minnesota Star Tribune, he was saying that that offensive line came in with high hopes, but they have been very disappointing so far this season. Um, but Max Brosmer, going back to their quarterback, he he can spin it a little bit, um, and he does have Daniel Jackson that he loves to rely on. He threw to him uh, 13 times in the game against Iowa, resulted in nine completions. But, I mean, it's a guy that threw for over 8,000 yards last uh during his career at his last school at new hampshire so he can he can do some things he just doesn't seem to have all that much talent but he's got a ton of experience like he knows what he's doing out there so it'll be interesting and of course darius taylor the running back from wallet lake uh western i believe it is uh out here in the detroit area uh and their left tackle arante ursary is the number three tackle for the nfl draft on pff's big board so if they've been underwhelming up front I think he's been the strongest one out of all those guys. Um, anything else on this Michigan defense? I, I do think it, again it's going to be low scoring, and they should have you know quite a bit of success here, especially up front. I would think so. And uh, I picked Minnesota to score 13 points. Hopefully, it's less than that. But uh, I think yeah. everybody else picked less. You know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe a broken play and a couple field goals. So uh, hopefully not. But Makari Page needs to be better on the in the back end. No question about it. Uh, if Will Johnson plays, we, you know, he's going to be questionable. And uh, then your other corner, whoever it is, is going to have to step up. But Jair Hill made huge strides last year. I'd feel much more comfortable this week, given how he played last week, if that's the case. And those big plays can happen, right? I mean, Mikey Sanders right. still got burned by Daniel Jackson last year, right before the half. And that's why it was a game at halftime. So yep. they can they could stick in it with a, a play or two. Of course, that Michigan team pulled away and, you know, they end up winning it all. But um, you know, it could change a game, one or two plays. Yeah, I don't really have anything else. I think that this is kind of a meat and potatoes matchup for them. It's are you going to show up and, and play another good week of football uh, on the defensive side of the ball? So uh, for me, if they handle their business and even not not encouraging them to not play as well as they did against USC, but I, I think that this is going to be a pretty manageable matchup for them on the defensive side of the ball. So uh, just want to keep setting yourself up. Get, maybe it's a game where you get some of your communication stuff sort of ironed out. You do need game reps to do that. Um, so we'll see what happens. No doubt. Let's predict this game. We have our final scores. We'll also have our offensive player of the game, defensive player of the game, our X factors for this game. But before we do, we have to talk about game time. If you're going to the Michigan game this weekend, you don't have tickets yet, go to game time to get your tickets. It is the exclusive ticketing partner of the Wolverine. It's the easiest way to get tickets to the biggest games, concerts, or shows. If you're going to a Tigers game this weekend, go to game time. 
Uh, my favorite part of the app, I say it every week, but I do love this. And I was looking the other day on game time for some Lions tickets. I don't know if I'm going Monday night or not, but was at least looking at it. You can see a picture of what your view will look like at the specific stadium. So I'll make sure to go to game time for that. They got the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and more. You can use the promo code ON3, O-N, the numeral three, ON3 for $20 off your first purchase. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code ON3 for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code ON3, O-N, numeral three for $20 off. Terms apply. Download game time today. Our predictions, we'll start with offensive player of the game. I can't go with anyone but Kalel Mullings here. I It doesn't really even need an explanation. I agree 100%. I think Kalel Mullings is going to be the, he better be the starter on Saturday if this is a meritocracy. Right. And I asked Sharon more about that. He goes, yeah, he probably he should. Maybe he would. He'll be in contention. And he said, yeah, he should. But at the same time, uh, I don't think he committed to it on Monday. So, but I want to see Cole get in there and get 20, 25 carries. I think he's your player of the game. I think he's by the fourth quarter. He's just a guy that wears you down. He said he, he deserved to be in the conversation to be the number one back. It's like, right. come on, come on. Yeah. Come on, dude. Let's make it three for three. I, I, I don't know who else to, to pick right now that I wouldn't curse. So right. there you go. Defensive player of the game. I, I have to go Mason Graham on this one. I feel like if you're a Minnesota, like they're going to be sitting there in their hotel on Friday night. And those offensive linemen are going to, if they can get any sleep, because they'll be thinking about Mason Graham, they're going to have nightmares during their sleep about Mason Graham on Friday night. I got a feeling that he's going to get some added attention, and that's why I'm going with Kenneth Grant. Okay, I think you're going to see them double him, and I think it's going to open some things up for Kenneth Grant in there, and that he's going to overpower them. I'm going to stay on the defensive line uh, with a guy who has 12 pressures so far this year, but not a sack to show for it yet. That'll change Saturday. Derek Moore, uh, not just his first sack of the year, and, and play, and he's played very well. Uh, it just doesn't have the sack numbers yet, but I think they are coming. I like that pick a lot. My X factor is going to be number 44, Max Bredesen. I think that if you're going to run this style of offense, right, you need a, a good fullback, somebody in there that just go back and watch every big play from last week. 44 was making a key block. Of course, everyone knows about the, the fourth and goal, but, I mean, he is just incredible. Yeah, I'm going with him as well. I think this is like, a game perfect for him, and I think you're going to see them run behind him a lot. He's got a screw loose as <laughs> – Grant Newsom said in a good way. And those are the kinds of guys that you want on this football team. I'll say X factor only because this guy could take it from being a 20 to 10 win to like a 31, 10 type of win. It's the quarterback. If you get anything out of the passing game, Alex orgy is, you know, it makes what he does in the run game. That so I, he'll have a better week. I, I think the math, or the probability suggests that he will have a better week. Um, and I think they're going to do a little more to get uh, get him comfortable and get him some confidence. So X-Factor-wise, I'll say Alex Orgy. Okay. Anthony, start us off with your final score. Final score, uh, I just had it pulled up here. Shame on me. Uh, I put myself in contention to lose another staff pick to Doug Skeen at the last minute. Uh, Doug Skeen picked 27-10 Michigan. I picked 26-10. Michigan, uh, which would be slightly over the over, which is 35 and a half. Um, I, I just feel like this this is going to be a meat and potatoes, workman-like game that it, I don't think it will have anyone more confident. I don't think it'll have anyone less confident, but I think it'll be a solid day's work at the office that positions them to uh, win a, not only a second game in a row, but you set yourself up for a win next week at Washington in your first road trip. So uh, 26-10 Michigan. I think it's going to be a relative rock fight, as Anthony Broom likes to call it. I think it's going to be tight and ugly. And in the third quarter, we're going to be pulling our hair out a little bit. Michigan gets a late touchdown here to make it look make it better. But I, I got something like 23 to 13, I believe that's what I put. So uh, a lot of field goals in this one. Yeah, I got 20 to 7. I think it's going to be similar. I think kind of by the second half, the defense is going to set the offense up in some good spots, and uh, and they'll be able to – score a little bit to make it a little more comfortable, but relatively close game. 
from me. And you know what the best wins are? The, the wins you get by one or more. So uh, that would be pretty nice for Michigan to come out victorious here and keep the Little Brown Jug in Ann Arbor. We got a pretty good slate here of college football games outside of Michigan against Minnesota, which we will pick here in our final segment, No Man Knows the Future. We will start with Wisconsin at USC. USC, 15.5-point favorites out in L.A. Over under 51.5. This game, 3.30 on CBS. Wisconsin coming off the bye. USC coming off a physical Whoa. game against Michigan. I got Wisconsin keeping it inside the number here being uh, with some fresh legs. Yeah, and USC Whoa. with uh, a little hangover probably after getting screwed at Michigan. Uh, according to their fan base. So yeah. there were some calls that could have gone their way for sure. But uh, I like Wisconsin to keep it relatively close and and to move the ball on them on the ground a little bit. I kind of feel like USC rolls in this game. Uh, Wisconsin has almost as much trouble completing a forward pass as Michigan does. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke now out for the year. They got to go out west. I, I, I actually liked – uh, what I saw of, out of USC uh, at certain points of last week's game, especially in the second half, uh, I think they roll in this game. Ohio State at Michigan State. Ohio State, 23.5 point road favorites over under 48.5. This is the first time Ohio State is going to play a real team, if you can call Michigan State that, 7 p.m. on Peacock, just like we like it. The whole nation will be subscribing to Peacock to tune into this one in East Lansing. But I have Ohio State. I, I know they haven't played anyone. You don't really know how much stock to put into what they've done so far. But this is going to be kind of the game where they where they come out and, and show that they're a really good team. I think Michigan State covers. I do. I think that uh, they're going to have some success on the ground against this Ohio State team. I think the quarterback is going to run a little bit more, and it's going to be a little bit closer than people think. Ohio State will win, but Michigan State will cover. Yeah, I'm going to go with Michigan State to cover, too. Um, Aiden Childs has the potential to be a problem if he holds on to the football, and they can run the ball a little bit. And I think they have played some good defense this year. So um, Ohio State, I, I haven't – you know, the box scores have looked great, obviously, but still waiting for them to show that gear uh, that they claim to have have with their off offseason championship. So reluctantly, I go with Sparty. One of the big reasons why I was excited – Michigan and Minnesota is a noon game is because of this one. Georgia at Alabama, 730 on ABC. Georgia, two-point road favorite over under 48 and a half. Kalen DeBoer, welcome to the big time in the SEC. I got Georgia winning this one. I just cannot picture Alabama beating them with in the first big game under Kalen DeBoer. I, I just feel like this is going to be Georgia. I got a feeling, man, Alabama is going to win this football game. I don't know why. But at home, and I think Kalen DeBoer is a good football coach. Yes. So, and Alabama seems to be getting better each week. So, I'm going to go with the Crimson Tide to win. I can't explain it either. I, I like Bama um, for all the reasons that you laid out there, and also this could be the first of who knows, maybe three matchups between these two teams this year. So, uh, I'll go with Alabama at home. Okay, and the final one. This is the one everyone will really be watching. Illinois at Penn State, 7.30 on NBC. Uh, that, this is kind of the varsity game. You put the JV game over on Peacock. Uh, uh, Penn State, 18-point favorite at home over under 47 and a half. I don't know. I think Illinois is good, but they're not that good. I think Penn State is going to control this one. I believe it's the whiteout. Correct me if I'm wrong there. I know they're asking for whiteout type of energy or something like that, and then Bielema kind of – fed the beast there with a dumb comment this week. So I think they're going to be revved up, ready to go. Penn State wins big. I think Illinois keeps this thing relatively close. I think this is a good physical football team. Uh, I mean, they're a physical football team. I don't know how good they are, but I think they are, uh, they've gone on the road in a hostile environment and proved they can win against Nebraska. I think they're going to keep it relatively close, maybe with even within 10 points. I think Penn State wins, but it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, 18 is a big number too. Um I think Penn State will win this game, but I could see Illinois kind of sticking around and uh, and covering this one. So uh, give me Illinois to cover, but I do think Penn State wins by two scores. Okay. Can't wait for all these games. Can't wait for Michigan 
and Minnesota on Saturday as well. You can follow everything Michigan football, basketball, recruiting over at thewolverine.com. Use the promo code UM1 for two months of premium access for just $1. Like the videos. Try to get to 300 likes here. Subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. And we will see everyone next time.